my beloved sisters, we are chapter 9, tuned into peace of Pastor Prince Live the Let Go Life. So we start off with the story of um, the woman who have been hemorrhaging for 12 long years. And when you read the story, you will see that this, uh, uh, this um, picture, she was trying to she was trying to get hold of the hem of Jesus' garment. So, itong picture na to, this is very accurate. Um, uh, if you put the story in the context at that time when our Lord Jesus um, uh, was uh, walked on earth um, during that time. So, let's read the story. Yeah. Now, a certain woman. I took the Mark version kasi you know that the Holy, the Holy Spirit um, really emphasize this story. Because ma, you will see that um, in Luke and in Matthew, there's also a, re, uh, there's also a, um, a, a recording of this particular um, story that happened. But I took the, ano, the version of Mark kasi may, merong importanteng phrase doon which we will, we will actually discuss and which will greatly help us. So now a certain woman had the flow of blood for 12 years. 12 years siyang may regla. Na hindi, hindi, uh, uh, it was unabated. So when you know, you know medically, right? Um, nandito si Dr. Jane that if you have um, um, continuous menstrual period, parang endometriosis siya uh, or some other conditions, you cannot bear fruit. So kapag nagiregla ka, you cannot bear fruit. So, ang nangyari sa kanya, can you imagine, 12 long years, and and mind you, there's no uh, modern day sanitary napkins. So, it is a um, menstrual cloth, right? And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all she had and was no better but grew worse when she heard about Jesus. So, suddenly, there was a shift in 27. When she heard about Jesus, remember that 12 long years, 12 years of quarantine. We know that during that time, um, um, in the context of their culture, a woman who has this, who has this um, uh, condition should, cannot yeah. go out of the house. So parang ano siya, no? parang um, yung lepro, parang leprous na kina-quarantine outside the camp. Pero ito, much worse. She's in, in, she is inside the camp, but she not, um, she not get out, and, and nobody can touch her, and no, and she cannot touch anybody, including her family members. It's not recorded if she has a family, but um, um very, very sad, no, if if this if this woman had a had a husband and had a, had children, because despite the fact na may family siya, if ever may family siya, they she cannot touch them or she cannot be touched by them. Anyway, what happened one day when she heard about Jesus? That's a very important phrase. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him. So what compelled her? What propelled her? What made her What made her decide to get out, to break the law? Because when she, get, she got out of the house, she has broken the law. In other words, in our lingo today, she has sinned. Kasi according to the law, a woman who has a menstrual discharge cannot go out and cannot touch anybody or cannot be touched. So, what happened is she she, she went out of the house. She came behind him. Remember, this is si Lord, ano siya eh, uh, more than a rock star. Everybody uh, were following him. We're pressing on him. And she came behind him in a crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes and I shall be well. Hallelujah. So what 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 propelled her? What compelled her to ano to um to do such thing is she heard about Jesus. So um, ito yung kanina yung din discuss natin. No, that this woman was um most probably she was by the window all her life, twelve years, day after day, month after month, year after long year. She sits like a, a spectator. Invisible to the throngs of life, passing in the busy street just as on the other side of her wall. She listens and watches, living vicariously through um, neighbors, relatives, and old friends who one by one have all but forgotten her completely. And remember when I was Netflix that year? I, I, uh, I remember my quarantine when I went to, went to Singapore um, um, last, December, last 2019 of December. So I was required to do quarantine. 
with all the gadgets that I have, ay, grabe, ang hirap. Ma much more so this, this woman. So, she was the untouchable one. It is the story of a woman in Mark 4 being subjected to unco un uncontrolled bleeding for 12 long years. It was an illness that would have been incred uh, incredibly difficult to bear under any circumstances. But in her culture, it also Ooh. rendered her unclean. Rendered her unrighteous hallelujah so ito na yung ano no inulit ko so she heard about jesus and she came behind him so ano yung ano yung uh, ano yung um uh, greek text nung she heard um the greek word for heard is ako eh. ako ako actually ako ay ako eh. so it's not um uh, merely uh, simple hearing but in the health sword studies, it brings out it's properly hearing, used of in, inner spiritual hearing that goes with receiving faith. She had um, uh, more than hearing, she had a listening heart, whereby she was able to receive faith from God. Remember, faith is not something that is born out, out of you do, but through the hearing of the word of Christ. Remember in Romans 10, 17, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. So, faith came. Faith came. Faith came when she heard about Jesus. So, so every, every Saturday, it's, a, it's um, something that's um, very precious to you and I. Because faith comes. Because we're the only, the only um, person we are talking about is our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, what happened? Then, um, uh, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Ano yung touch yun? Haptomai. Uh, it's uh, uh, to fasten, to lay hold of. So, it's not a, uh, yung parang casual na parang dampi lang. I think this is something na, ano parang, uh, in, in, in other words, in our lingo today, she grabbed him by the hem of his garment. So, it's uh, um, touching that influences or touching someone in a way that alters, alters or changes or modifies um, the, li the life of that person. It's uh, what help, helps word studies calls as impact touching. Ganya. So, you know, parang ano, no, naalala ko. In the context of marriage, when the husband um, compliments the wife, when the husband washes the wife with the water of the word, when she is um, given compliments, what, is hap what happens? Impact touching. ba? So, tingnan natin yung hem of the garment. Kasi, Bakit ba? What is in the hem of the garment? In the cultural context of the of the Israelites or the Hebrews, ito yan, it's actually the tekelet, it's the prayer shawl, or it's the, yung end of the, kasi si Lord meron siyang prayer shawl eh, tekelet. Yung end nun, may seed zit. Yan, ito yung atasal. So, it's the tassel which is a, which is symbolic of the person of God. In Numbers 15.39, the Lord um, um, told Moses to say to the children of Israel, And you shall have a tassel, that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, that you may not follow the harlotry, harlotry to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined. So, oh, Ate Jo, eh, commandments naman, but let's look closely because the English doesn't bring out um, the, 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 the accurate um Meaning behind the word, uh, behind the verse, uh, Numbers 15.39. So, ito yung Hebrew interlinear. So, pinalaki ko na lang siya. You know why? Because yung word na, ano, remember all the commandments of the Lord. And He will uh, atasal to you and you will see Him. Uh, so, you will remember. Ano yung makikita mo? It's Aleph Tab. Yan, ito yan. Pinalaki ko lang. Aleph Tab. Remember who? Remember Aleph Tab. Remember Jesus. So the woman knows because in the in the tassel actually righteousness is provided. Remember, she is rendered unclean. So in her Jewish mind, when she touches the tassel, when she touches the garment, she in her mind she will be cleaned. Hallelujah! Because there is Aleph Tab. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So you and I now, then we will discuss it later in length. No, but. You know what? The revelation of the righteousness of God in Christ um, uh, uh, given to us. The righteousness of God in Christ, which is the person of Jesus Christ given to you and I. Something that we don't need to work for is the revelation, the, the, the main crux, 
the main revelation of the new covenant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, in Mark 5, 28, so pagpatuloy natin, no, she was saying, if I shall touch even the garments of him, I will be healed. Meaning, if you, if, if I have this, uh, if I can only touch his righteousness, I will be, I who is unclean, will be made clean. I will be healed. Yung, yung healed doon, is the word um, sozo. For too long, the popular understanding of Christian salvation has been limited to securing a place in heaven. For such a long time, we were trained, sad to say, unfortunately, we were trained to preach the gospel like life insurance agents. Na, oh, kung mamamatay ka ba ngayon, sigurado ko bang mapupunta sa langit? Yun yun eh, to secure a place in heaven. Sadly, many Christ followers experience constant defeat during the, their time on earth because the, fo the, the focus of our communication, of our delivery of the gospel of Jesus Christ is for the person to, uh, to be transferred from, from hell to heaven. That is very inaccurate and that is not the gospel. So yung sozo, yung heal don, sozo, as we've learned uh, many, many times, is the Greek word, uh, the, to save is the Greek word sozo. Which means to save, to heal, to preserve, to rescue. So it is um, in the Helps Word Study, um, 4982. It is to deliver out of danger. So me, I declare sozo upon my uh, uh, right side in the name of Jesus. To deliver out of danger and into safety. Use principally of God's rescuing believers from the penalty and power of sin and into his provision. Safety. Sozo. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the gospel of Jesus Christ, sozo is provided. So, yung root word nun, yung sozo, is salvation, soteria, which is a noun. Because yung sozo, it's a verb. So, it is actually from the root word, savior, which is salvation. And the adject adjectival form is soterion, which is saved or rescued from. Hallelujah. This is your portion, my portion in the new covenant. Hallelujah. So, 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 saved, healed, and delivered. So, the biblical concept of salvation comes from the Greek word sozo, so, has a holistic implication. Power and victory flowed through the New Testament church because the early Christians understood how to live out their salvation in a way that impacted every area of their lives, spirit, soul, and body. So, after that, sab, um, um, the woman was able to get hold of the hem of the garment. So she was able to touch. And then, si Lord sabi niya, who touched me? Diba? Tapos, um, uh, uh, and then, uh, sabi ng mga disciples, parang, the Lord, everybody's pressing on you, and then you're asking, who touched me? But Jesus knew that uh, 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 virtue has come out of him and be because somebody has faith, right? So, sabi niya, and then finally, uh, nag, nag, um, nag, um, the, 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 the woman admitted that she was the one who touched, her, touched him. And then what did he say? Daughter, 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 my, my child, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Bakit hindi bride? Bakit hindi bride? Hindi, hindi pa kasi... It, the bride came after the cross, remember? Finish! And then the bride came out. So dito, the Lord is speaking the words from our Heavenly Daddy God. Remember that there's no word uttered by our Lord Jesus Christ unless He heard it from Abba Himself. So Abba was telling Je Abba told Jesus, Hey, tell her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Pag binasa mo lang in English, Parang, um, uh, go in peace, parang goodbye, ganyan, and be healed. Pero it's so much more. So, tingnan natin yung, ano, ah, yung interlinear, yung Greek. And he said to her daughter, um, the faith of you has healed you. Go in peace and be, and be sound from the affliction of you. Tingnan natin yung um, preposition. So, may importanteng preposition dito, yung in. Actually, hindi, siya, hindi lang siya in, eh, but into. Into peace. Yan. So, ano yun? Eis. Yung into. Eis. Yung in. Eis. So, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Pag-aralan na, pinalaki ko ha, yung graphics, yung Greek preposition. So, maraming Greek prepositions, um, like um, over, against, facing, before, behind, together, 
um ganyan so itong itong ano itong um caricature na to is very very um useful kasi it gives you it gives you the um the the meaning the the depth of the uh, meaning of the greek preposition so for example towards yan pag ganun towards the circle so there's a circle and there's the inner circle and then up and so on but look yung into sabi ni lord go into ano san siya pa pa, pa, pa sa, where, where is it pointing go into rest go into rest meaning have this consciousness have this consciousness that you are already uh, rested, that you're already completed. So, yung pinaka-core doon, ano, yung pinaka-core um, um, revelation that you and I, that Abba Daddy God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, is telling us, is, A, hey, you are, you are, you are um, the restful one. You are resting on the finished work of Jesus Christ. So, go into peace. Go into peace, not out of, ah, not away from, not down or not up. Go into peace. So meaning, go into see. And who is our peace? Who is our rest? It's a person. It's just saying, go into Jesus. Remain in Jesus. Rest upon Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so that's what that's what it means, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go into peace. Ano naman yung go, sabi, sabi nga, go in to where? Go into peace. Go into Irene. Irene is the Greek word for shalom. Shalom is the Hebrew word for peace. So, Irene. Ay, ay, yung ace muna. Yung ace, di ba? It's, uh, um, it's literally a motion into which implying penetration. Unto union. So, meaning, yung pag nilagay mo in Christ, Anna Jane. You are stating the truth that you are in union with Christ. So it's super powerful. It's your power of attorney. In Christ. A yes in Christ. Hallelujah. So into where? Into Christ. Into your peace. Diba? You are my peace. Who has broken down every wall. It's a noun. It's Irene. Yung mga may pangalan na Irene. Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay peace. Peace which means... You are in union. You are joined together into a whole. Your wholeness is found in our Lord Jesus Christ. Holy, whole, perfectly, perfectly perfect, completely complete. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Irene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Properly, when all essential parts are joined together, it's the peace of, it's not something na, oh, you feel calm, you feel um, tranquil. No, it's so much more. Irene is your union with Christ. And it's not it's much more than um standing, right? Because previously we were we were studying that um when we are uh, uh the righteousness of God is like your legal standing. But actually nobody is changed by recognizing your sta yung standing, no. It's 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 actually you receive a person. Right? Into, into, now into, you are joined together as a whole. So, pinalaki ko ha, properly wholeness, yung irene, when all essential parts, when all the broken parts of your life, when all the puzzles of your life is joined together in Christ. That's why you can say, yung sinabi ni Renee Zellweger kay Tom Cruise, you complete me. Lord Jesus, you complete me. You complete me. You are. You have made me com uh, uh, completely complete. You have made me perfectly perfect. And you have made me holy, holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Christ. So you are joined together. Remain in Jesus, my dear beloved sisters. Paul gives this remarkable, powerful insight in his letter to the Ephesians when he presents Jesus as our peace. So, did you ever thought about this, um, Jesus as your peace? But now, in Christ Jesus, you, who once were far off, has been brought near. You are brought near. Brought to a place of nearness by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ, our peace, is the um, subject matter of um, Ephesians. For he himself is I, I, our Irene, our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition, 
having abolished his flesh, the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two. It is now declaring your union with Christ, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God. One body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Ephesians 2.13 So without a revelation that we are the habitation of God, or in other words, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that God came to dwell in you and I, we will always be waiting for a visitation from God. Again, without a revelation that we are the habitation of God, we will always be waiting. We'll be always be waiting for the visitation from God. Diba? We used to pray like that. Lord, come! Pero pa kanta ka, Holy Spirit, I need you. It's very um, um, uh, out of the new covenant um, provisions. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ and you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. God is now hab habitating you. So, Instead of um instead of being in the throne room, we we've, we've um um uh, unconsciously place ourselves selves in the waiting room, forever waiting. But no, now God is saying that hey, you are I am your irony, I am your completeness, I am your completion. You are you are in Christ. So when you cannot see what God has done, you will spend your life grasping for something better. When you cannot see what God has done, that A, through the cross of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ poured out at the cross, He has actually made you His habitation. But unless you, you see it, unless you see it, you will spend your life grasping instead of um, reigning for something better. Here is the gospel. Here is the gospel in a nutshell. There is nothing better than Christ in you, the hope of glory. In this life, Problems may assail you. In this life, lack or sometimes diseases may assail you. In, in, um, Jesus told, 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 told us himself, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Although, uh, all those uh, sometimes sicknesses or um, lack or whatever, the enemy uh, might bring you something. Which will, uh, how, what will happen? It will, who will it collide into? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It collided in me, actually. Kanina. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. So to see that we have already been blessed in the spiritual realm. To see, it, and it's the Holy Spirit who um, enables us to see. How how we have already been blessed in the spiritual realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ brings an end to grasping and entering into the rest of being being whom God has made us to be sons of God and co heirs with Christ. And actually, last Wednesday I had this um uh, personal testimony. So si Ella at saka si Ate Jojo they were um they were very concerned about me. Na. Ojo, um, have you found something? Ganyan, uh, um, um, when are you, when are you going back to Singapore? Sabi ko, you know what? Um, uh, sabi ko sa kanila, um, uh, you asked me this question two years ago. Actually, hindi, hindi naman exactly two years ago, but we started kasi Bible study 2019 eh. And then I was, um, I had this, um, revelation na, Doon sa story ni Lord, um, when they were uh, in a boat, and then um, the Lord gave them the word, um, you're gonna cross over, and then they met a storm, and then um, they were very fearful, and then the Lord said, uh, why, are, why are you so, so fearful? You of little faith. You know what? The, the Lord already gave the word, you, you're gonna cross over. Right? So, sabi ko sa kanila, you know what? The... My spiritual understanding of that word actually came into full circle um, through our journey of faith, through our discussion um, for the last how many Bible studies that we had. I have to see it in the spiritual realm that, hey, I have crossed over with who? With Jesus. It is done. It's, we have to see it first that we have crossed over. Right? And then the manifestation, don't worry about it. it it's, it's done. So, I, and to tell you, I was verbalizing it. 
Actually, I only verbalized it, it verbalized it last Wednesday. That a hey, I have crossed over. I I have indeed crossed crossed over me because you know what? Because I am in Christ. I saw it. I saw it, and and uh, what a relief. Para ako nabunutan ng tinig. Hallelujah! So you can live the let go life because you know that you have crossed over and you have to see it in the spiritual realm. So to cross over to what? To seeing that Christ is your amen. Eh? That you are, uh, uh, He has set you at one again, complete. So upon uh, having this revelation that Christ is your peace, Christ is your amen, eh? it's a confident assurance that only comes when we spend time acknowledging our being with Him and in Him, in Christ. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. If then you were, cre- you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden in, with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. I want to emphasize, actually, right? That you, for, for you to have this really great consciousness of um, um, you are in Christ, you are completely complete in Christ, He is your Irene, is to have a revelation of the word is. Christ is your life. Christ is your life. Uh, where Christ is is sitting at the right hand. You know that the Greek word is. Is class, di ba, sa Colossians, no? Christ as is a verb. Hallelujah. Teka muna, na, na, na ano ko yan, sandali, ah, saan na ba yun? Ah, saan na yung is? Wait. Namali ang aking uh, ayon. Doon dapat yun. Ah, saan na yan? Ayan. Okay. So, ano yung is sa ano? Ano yung is sa uh, um, Greek? Amy. I me. Actually, as in I me, my heart goes, I me. I, I am. Did you know that? You know, when, when, when we when we had the revelation last Wednesday, talaga, what? I am is. So, in, 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 in the Greek, it's um, um, is, it's, uh, it's very straightforward. So, it's a present tense. Present indicative indicative move, meaning it's timeless. And you know that when the Lord um um asked Moses uh when Moses asked uh, ask um um the Lord, who who uh, what shall I tell the people um um your name to be? He said, I am, I am is a blank check, right? I am your healer, I am your provider, I am your all in all, I am your everything. So so it's it's a mouthful. So pinalaki ko yung ano ah. So yung example niyan is um um John 14:6 I am the way the truth and the life. Right? Amy naturally accords with the fact that Christ is eternal meaning I I was and will be. Hallelujah. So it's it's um uh, it's really your position in Christ. Always forever. Who, who he who who always was is and will be. Hallelujah. This is you, my dear sisters. <coughs> Amy. So, now, <coughs> ayan, pag, pag inuubo ko, no? Medyo ano. So, now, inanal natin na, you are the bride of Christ. Because of the finished work. Yung kala, di ba? Um, <coughs> out of the, out of the finished work of Jesus Christ came the bride. In its semantic root, the word kala, kala, has a double uh, lamed which means destruction and completion, ito yan. Pag flinip mo yan, <coughs> pag flinip mo, magiging, di ba, anong itsura niya? It's praise, it's thanksgiving. So, a life which has, um, uh, uh, has the revelation that um, um, she is the bride or he is the bride of Christ is marked with a uh, life of thanksgiving. So in marriage, your life as a single person is destroyed and no longer is it my things, it's now our things. So sabi ni Lord, diba, all that I have is yours. Yet being joined with another person in a marriage is really is really a completion of the way God designed us. As God said, two shall become one flesh. 
because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now you are complete. You are one with Christ. So the sages, yung mga rabbi dati, teach us that there are three types of prayer. There is the prayer of a child to a parent, which we used to be um, like before, like, like us before, no? That seems to fit majority of us like before. Parang it goes like this. Oh God, please give me. Please help me. It's a prayer that has a sense that you are separated from your Savior. Separated from your Abba. And then there's another level. Ito naman yung ano, servant-like, worker-like. A more matured prayer supposedly of the wife to the husband. Like, how can I help you? What what am I going to do for you to answer my prayer? How can I serve you? Yan. Hindi hindi posture of a bride, posture ng katulong. My dear sisters, we are not servants, we are the bride. We are the bride of Christ. There's much more on it, but you have um heard so many sermons and read books on what it means to be the bride of Christ, but it will not um it it it, it is not something which is like this. Lord, what can I do for you? Not no. It is it is what what you are uh, doing with God. It is not for God. It is with God. Hallelujah. So, yun yung third way. Third way to pray to God is that we are a bride, the bride of Christ, and God is the bridegroom. Like a husband wishes, and we know that the husband, our Lord Jesus Christ, wishes to protect his wife's feelings, her heart. He does not want, uh, want to offend her or wound her heart. God not only made himself vulnerable coming to earth in human flesh to experience our suffering in the flesh, but he has also made himself vulnerable by giving us his heart when we give him ours. Hallelujah. So now having a revelation that you are in Christ, now you, you, you can actually have this very intimate, um, you know, posture na you're not shouting, you are not, Oh Lord, I love you! How do how do lovers um um talk? They whisper, right? Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you for providing for me. <coughs> Hallelujah! And we know, right, <coughs> that the word cry that the word finish is the word um uh, <coughs> also for bride. You are complete. You are an accomplished um uh work of Jesus Christ. Finish in Hebrew. Kala is the same word as the word bride. Hallelujah. In 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 the New Passion Translation, <coughs> when he had sipped the wine, it is finished, my bride. Then he bowed his head and surrendered his spirit to God. So the pictograph of the word bride, diba, we all know, is grace of the shepherd revealed. So, <coughs> hindi ko na to i-discuss kasi na-discuss na natin. So, <coughs> Jesus Defines you and I as his bride. He defines our very being. He's our completeness. He's our completion. Hallelujah. The bride of Christ. So, finish here. It's the Hebrew kala or the Greek tetelestai. It has a sense of never to be repeated completion. You are his masterpiece. So, when he, when, when, and, and when you hear somebody saying you are his masterpiece, of course. Because you are born out of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because, of his sacrifice at the cross, you came out. It is finished, my bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, it's, it's Genesis 2, 1, therefore, is about a bridal party. So, in Revelations 20, 20, 17, the spirit and the bride say, come every, every day, and uh, uh, one very, one very useful, um, useful, uh, advice that I can give to my, mga inaana, kagaya ni Jane, is to always remember your wedding night. Always remember when the time that you were courting each other. Your your bridal party. Hallelujah. So, ano naman yung bridegroom? Kasi syempre may bride. May, may bridegroom, di ba? So, the bridegroom, you know, it, it will blow your socks off. Wala ito nung Wednesday, ya. Ah. You know that the word bridegroom, here is katan, which is another word for marriage. Bridegroom, katan, is another word for marriage. This word for marriage is the idea of joining together in complete truth and honesty. When God as the bridegroom is married to us, He is joined to us in complete truth. Remembering here Jesus' words, They that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is God's idea for you, to, for, for, for you and I to be married to Him. 
His name, his name is actually the other meaning for marriage. So to hear from he the heavenly realm is to hear of what is forever. To look at your bridegroom is to look at forever. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above. Set your minds on the fact that you are married to Christ. This is the new covenant for you died. What, ano yun? Ano yung, uh, how do you set your mind? Ano daw yun? For you died to the law and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then also you will appear with him in glory. In these verses in, in Colossians, there is a little wor word. Ah, ito na yun. Which is, the word is, which we learn about, right? Which, is, which means the great I am. When our hearts and our minds is set on the realm of the spirit, we can live in thanksgiving for what is. But when our eyes are set on earthly things, we find ourselves living in fear of what might be. And the clear example is the life of um, um, uh, uh, Paul and Silas. They're living they're living the rebel out of the revelation that they are in Christ. Diba? In Acts 16.25. At midnight, in the in the most dark, the uh, darkest portion of their lives, where other prisoners are urinating and defecating on them in the innermost part of the dungeon, Paul and Silas knew that they were in Christ, were praying and singing hymns to God, thanksgiving, and the prisoners were listening to them. If Paul and Silas had not had only seen as the world sees, then while lying in that jail in Philippi, they would have seen themselves as forsaken by God. But in the darkness of that cell, they found themselves seeing more clearly than ever, seeing by the Spirit. That night, a different sound was heard in that jail. Not the cries of forsaken by God. It's, it's, it became a bridal party. But songs of men hidden in God. They were not proclaiming a message of what might be, but of what is. What is? The great I am in knowing that reality. They were not waiting for freedom. They were living. They were reigning in a freedom that chains or walls could not contain. Hallelujah. And another example, which is very, it, it will blow again your, your socks off. The, the story of our father Abraham in Genesis. So how do we fit in the message translation, eh, um, chapter 4? How do we fit that we know of Abraham, our first father in the faith? Uh, no, this is um, actually Hebrews. Uh, our father into his, uh, our, fa our first father in the faith into his new way of looking at things. Remember, a new way of looking at things. How do you look at things? If Abraham, by what he did for God, got, got God to approve him, he could certainly have taken credit for it. So it, it's saying by, by the law, right? By the law. But the story we're given is God's story, not Abraham's story. What we read in scripture is Abraham entered into. He entered into, into. Right? Yung word na ayis, di ba? What God was doing for him and that was the turning point. So in our lives, right? The turning point is when we enter into rest. Enter into Christ. Enter into peace. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be his own. In Romans pala, Romans 4, 1 to 3. Hallelujah. So, church, bride of Christ, in Colossians 1, 25, 27, of this church, I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed unto me for your benefit. The whole context of the word steward is being a steward of the new covenant. So that I might, ano daw yung, uh, wh what are you going to steward? That you might fully carry out the preaching of the word, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is not preaching of what you will do for God, but teaching, the, but teaching and proclaiming that Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is being a good steward. It is not giving an enumeration of five things to do. Blah, 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 blah. But proclaiming and declaring boldly that in Christ, in you, the hope of glory. Here we have the Apostles' definition on what is to fully carry out the preaching of the Word of God. It is to declare nothing less than the union of the believer with Christ. Here the Spirit expresses this glorious mystery. The glorious mystery that was hidden from ages and generations but now revealed Christ in you. Chapter 3 declares us to be hidden with Christ in God 
And there we find what every believer needs to see before they can accept this truth. For you died. You have to see this. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. First, before you have a revelation that you are, your life is hidden with Christ in God, is you have to see that for you died. You have to see the finished work. For out of the finished work came out the bride. So, here's the great crossing over that every believer must make in their thinking. If they are to remain vulnerable to every religious teaching that fills the church with new ideas on how to reduce the sin in your life, the gospel is not, it's not like that. The gospel is not God's instruction on how to prune back sin in your life to some acceptable level because sin is de de dealt, with, dealt with once and for all at the cross. It is the, it, it is, uh, oh no, it is the religiously unacceptable message that God took an axe to the root of your sin, your separation from His life. He has taken the axe and completely obliterated it at the cross. He took that old try harder to get closer to God through reducing your sin life, uh, sin's life and nailed it to the cross and buried it. As a man thinks, so is he. So uh, uh, how, do you, how do you view sin? It's very, very crucial. You have to view sin according to God's perspective. What is the perspective of God, um, um, uh, uh, um, of God ako, uh, uh, about your sins in your life? That, that He has forgiven you completely. That sin was put on the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Yet, He was made to be sin so that we, 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 He has made to be sin who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. That is our confession. That is what suppo what that is what suppose um that we are uh that is the way that we should think. So as long as the believer does not grow to accept the death of their old life or of separation from God and their new new life of union in Christ, the renewal of their thinking, then their thinking remains double minded. So they struggle to receive the new life of God, which is a life of supply, a life of supply of what? Of righteousness, of holiness, of abundance. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke of remaining in the place of union with Him and that apart from Him, we can do nothing. Yet so often, in churches, believers are spoken to as if the biggest issue in their life is sin, separation from God. It is common to find the, uh, it is common to find the belief that God, that the gospel must be balanced yeah, by the law. Yet, to talk to a child as if, as if they are both son and an orphan can only ever produce self-consciousness, unstable children. So, when believers cannot handle the teaching on righteousness, they remain as spiritual infants, in, and that's in Hebrew, clinging to the schoolmasters of the law for comfort. How do you know when a, when a um, um, Christian is already mature? When a Christian understands the word of righteousness, when a Christian understands that on her own, on his own, he cannot, he cannot produce righteousness, but righteousness is given because righteousness is the person of Jesus Christ. So, my dear children, my, my, my dear, my dear um, uh, uh, sisters, the real you, the real you is now married to Christ, dead to sin, separation, and alive to God. You are no more separated by your union with Christ. Likewise, you also, in, in Romans 6.11, reckon yourself. Reckon. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng reckon? Um, uh, once and for all. Right? Decide for yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 10, Ephesians 6.10 in the Amplified Bible Classic Edition. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. That strength which is boundless might provide. And that, my dear sisters, is chapter 9. Tune in to peace. <music>